Welcome once again to Command Point. I'm Shane and I'm here with yet another episode of the Fire Team Breakdown series. This episode was nominated by uh, Adam Yance and Clay Purse over on patreon.com slash command point. Come check us out. And today we're going to be talking, as you can see from the, uh, you know, what's on screen right now, the Sisters of Silence fire team. So those of you that saw our tier list that was uploaded in like a week or two ago at this point, you know that I had still listed Talons of the Emperor as being uh, the best faction in the game been a few weeks since i said that and i i think there's one or two other teams that are pretty close to them and it's hard for me to say that there's one team that's the best in the game but i want to talk about sisters of silence today not just because they were nominated but because i think it gives a lot of important context as to why i think this is still possibly the best faction in kill team so obviously during the height of the Talon's dominance in the first month or two of the game's release, it was people playing for Custodes, the two Custodian Guard fire teams. And that was a really easy team to play. They were outrageously powerful with the 4 APL and, and the way Brotherhood of Demigods worked. And they were so strong and so easy to make because you could just get those four models, and that was pretty much all you needed, that people didn't really initially seem to be looking at Sisters of Silence very much. Uh, they were kind of cast to the wayside a little bit, so to speak. But I'm here to tell you why the Sisters of Silence Fire team is actually crucial at this point, like post nerf, to Talons being one of the best teams in the game. So there's a Seek and Destroy, Security, and Recon. The only difference here is Recon, of course. I don't know if I would recommend taking Recon with Talons, um, but. Seek and Destroy Security are both excellent choices for this kill team. A lot of the time you're going to be running the sisters with a Custodian Guard fire team. You're going to have the, the two paired together. And I think there is some fringe cause maybe for something like two Sisters of Silence fire teams, but we'll get into that later. So a Sister of Silence fire team includes five operatives from the following list. So you've got prosecutors, witch seekers, and vigilators. And then if you don't have a leader, you can change a uh, Sisters of Silence prosecutor operative for a Sisters of Silence superior, which can have either a bolt gun gun butt, flamer gun butt, or executioner great blade. So basically, it is one of those, one of the three prosecutor, witch seeker, vigilator, just a leader version. So. Let's look at these models, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts. Let's start with the Prosecutor. This is the basic bolt gun sister. Uh, the chassis is it's two APL, three circle movement, three up save, which is really nice, eight wounds, which is, it doesn't sound great, but we'll get into that. Bolt gun is a bolt gun, and a bolt gun's good. Uh, gun butt, four attacks is actually quite nice. Two, three kind of sucks, but it's shocking to me that they have four attacks on their melee weapon here um yeah just a nice little bonus in case you get caught in combat with these with these ladies so all sisters of silence models are going to have the psychic abomination ability so while an operative is within six inches of an anathema psychana operative which is the keyword that sisters of silence got um, if you look up the custodians do not get that uh, it cannot perform psychic action. Sisters of Silence operatives cannot be targeted or affected by psychic action. So this seems to be separate from the first sentence. So if you're within six inches of a Sisters of Silence model, you can't do a psychic action, period. Uh, and in general, regardless of whether or not you're within six inches, you can't target the Sister of Silence model with a psychic action. So that means like a psychic shooting attack or something like a debuff or something. And with Warp Coven being a really big thing in the meta right now, that's huge, and people love Grey Knights too, and Grey Knights are pretty common in the meta. So I think this is pretty good right now, and I think as the game grows and moves on, we're probably gonna see more Psychers and Bespoke teams, if I had to guess. So I think this is actually just gonna get better and better with time, um, and it's already quite good. Let's move on and look at the Witch Seeker. So the Witch Seeker is the Flamer. It's just the Flamer, five shots, 
Hitting a two is two, two. I don't love the flamer. I think a lot of the time you would much rather have a bolt gun if you want a shooting model, but that's just me. You'd probably run maybe one or two on the roster, but overall I'm gonna avoid Witch Seekers most of the time. I just don't love flamers, especially flamers that are only two, two. Like I've seen some flamers that are two, three, and um, I know that Warp Coven flamer, I believe, or at least the flame pistol is two, four, and that's pretty crazy but just 2-2 two, two just doesn't move the needle for me. And then let's look at the Vigilator, which I think is the most interesting of these options. So same stat line, but it has an Executioner Great Blade, which is basically, it's a power weapon. It's four attacks on threes, damage four six with lethal five. So this is really strong. And you could take five of these if you want because the, the fire team is built up of any combination of five of these three choices. So you can have two bolt guns and three vigilators, for instance, which I think is a pretty strong option on its own. You could have five vigilators, which is pretty good. Um, you can lean into the shooting on the custodies and take five vigilators, or you can have a couple of uh, storm shield custodies and have, you know, in turn, take a few bolt guns and then some vigilators. Uh, yeah, the vigilator is fantastic. It's my favorite of these three options, but let's look at the superior. So. This is the leader option. And in my opinion, if you're running a Talon's team with a sister's fire team, even if you have the custodies, I think you should always be taking the sisters of, Sup of Silence Superior. Because when you think about it, you're taking the superior for two up weapon skill and the extra wound. Um, the custodian guard, they already have two up weapon skill and ballistic skill. So the leader isn't gonna be buffing in that area and they've already got 18 wounds. So unless you really want a 19th wound on your custodian guard, I think that the ninth wound for the uh, superior here goes a really long way. On top of that, you can outfit the Sisters of Silence Superior with any of the three options. And in my opinion, I think both the Bolt Gun and the Great Blade are fantastic choices here. I would very much recommend that you take this one as the leader rather than a custodian leader. So. Uh, moving down the strategic play so a lot of these only affect the custodian guard fire teams uh, but there is however one or two that affect the sisters of silence fire team for starters creeping dread this is a huge one so whenever it's a strategic ploy one cp until the end of the turning point while an enemy operative is within three inches of a sister of silence operative you worsen the ballistic skill and weapon skill as if they were injured so this is kind of like, um, it doesn't have the movement debuff, but it's a bit like Contagion that Death Guard and Demons got. So, and it's another reason why I personally would really like the Vigilators because the Vigilators are gonna get up and close and they're going to be actually utilizing Creeping Dread once they get in. Um, and, it, and it kind of moves the needle just a little bit more to help them be uh, effective in, in close combat. On top of that, so obviously Peerless Warriors only affects Custodes. Uh, Aegis the Empire, Emperor, however, that does help the Sisters of Silence. So whenever they take damage from a uh, critical attack dice, you can choose for it to afflict normal damage instead. So this is very useful, especially for their survivability. Um, obviously the Sisters have quite a bit less on the wounds uh, characteristic compared to the custodies so i think they're anything that boosts survivability is going to be helping them a bit uh, and on top of that the last one that i want to talk about in terms of ploys is the tactical ploy talons so this one is specifically encouraging you to run a custodian fire team in conjunction with a sisters of silence fire team so when a model is activated and they're within six inches of enemy operatives or within two inches of the center of an objective marker. If, if it's a sister, then after you activate, well, I guess they activate at the same time, but if it's a sister and they're within three inches of a custody or vice versa, you can activate them at the same time and perform their actions in any order. So this isn't like you activate one guy and then activate the other one after they're done. You can like shoot with the custodian guard, then shoot with the sister, then charge with the custodian guard, fight with the custodian guard, and then do something with the sister. It's really interesting. I mean, it gives a lot of flexibility to what you're able to do. And I think this ploy single-handedly 
raises the skill ceiling for Talons by quite a bit, which is interesting when you think about the fact that in their dominance uh, in tournaments in the first two months, it was just people running for custodians, and, and not to take anything away from the people that found success with them, but I think a lot of those players would even admit it wasn't exactly a tough team to play. But with the nerfs and, and kind of indirectly encouraging you to run Sisters of Silence, I think you're seeing the skill ceiling of this team actually get raised, and I, I think we're not even close to seeing the most out of Talents of the Emperor. So... Uh, there is one more thing that I think is absolutely 100% crucial to talk about with Sisters of Silence and the, and the thing that makes me so high on them compared to, uh, com compared to a lot of the other fire teams in the game. So go down to the equipment and we've got a few options. There's the Oath Parchment, which is basically a, it's the free reroll. It's kind of like a, uh, like a Wraithbone Talisman or... I'm forgetting what the Space Marine one is called, but yeah. Uh, Tanglefoot Grenade, that's a Custodes only. Misericordia, Custodes only. There's the Psych Out Grenade, which um, it's good against Psychers and Demons. Certainly worth a consideration, but probably not. And the reason for that is the Vratin Faceplate here for two equipment points. So this is insane. So this is only for Sisters of Silence. Custodes can't get this. Uh, once per battle, when damage would be inflicted upon this operative from an attack dice, subtract three from the damage inflicted to a minimum of zero. What this effectively means is once per battle, you're going to have three more wounds. As effectively, any model that has the faceplate has three more wounds because you need to do three more damage to kill them. You do four damage to them on the first attack, they say, nope, that's one, and then they go down to seven wounds. So effectively your sisters of silence models it says eight eight wounds here if you give them the faceplate they have 11. the leader has 12. so what you have is 11 11 wound models that's the same as a gray knight or a uh, death watch veteran and a lot of marines 12 wound model same thing with a three up save these are basically marines with two apl and with the vigilators these are strong models and you're 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 getting auras that hurt the uh, the ballistic and weapon skill of opponents. So you're you're kind of hurting your opponent's stats. You have basically marine chassis that are working with two custodian guards and uh, seven models. But that's a lot of wounds. Very good armor saves. So I mean, for obviously you're going to want to run AP against a team like this. AP shooting. Um, but I, I just don't see how this isn't a top tier team, in my opinion. Um, so a lot of the time, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking mostly Vigilators because you want to benefit off Creeping Dread as much as possible. You might take one or two bolt guns and you're going to be loading up on faceplates. It's two equipment points. I legitimately think it's probably worth it a lot of the time to take 10 equipment points worth of faceplates and just give it to every one of your sisters. Maybe if you have a bolt gun, you don't have to give them that and you can, you know, give a custodian model a misericordia or maybe a psych out grenade somewhere. But yeah, I, um, I'm very high on the faceplate sister fire team with a lot of vigilators paired with custodians. Uh, I did mention earlier that there might be situations where you'd be tempted to run um, two of these fire teams. Uh, I think maybe again something like uh, Comorites where they have huge shooting weapons and they're just kind of begging you to take a custodian guard so they can one shot it off the board. Um, most of the time though, that's not a real concern. And uh, generally speaking, I think that the custodian guard fire team paired to the sister fire team is probably one of the strongest kill teams in the game still, even post nerf. So. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope you give uh, all, all you Talon players that are kind of dropping the faction after the nerfs that didn't own sisters. I hope you give it a second thought, maybe pick up a box of sisters and uh, give this kill team a chance because I think they're insanely strong, possibly still the strongest, at least top three minimum, probably top two. Uh, yeah. Anyway, have a good one, everybody. And uh, if you're enjoying this video, this series, uh, and you're not subscribed, please do. And it's one click and it helps us out a ton. 
And if you'd like to nominate future episodes, then check us out on Patreon. Potentially it's four bucks a month and you get access to some of our Patreon exclusive podcasts, early access to content, and you get to be a part of this process of choosing new episodes of the Fireteam Breakdown. So yeah, again, have a good one. I'll talk to you later. Thank you.